Thank you very much, Andy. And I want to thank our church choir who have been uh, faithfully singing throughout the entire year. And now they're going to be singing with us this morning. Uh, and then take a little respite over the summertime. But thank you for the music that you bring to us uh, during the offering and just the support that you offer us on a daily basis. So thank you, choir. Let's give them a big hand. Good morning, I'm Dick Johnson, uh, the interim uh, pastor here at uh, Our Saviors. Uh, we welcome guests and visitors who are with us this morning. If you are a guest or a visitor, we would encourage you to complete a card that's out in the, um, out in the narthex area and leave it in the offering plate as a way for us to make a connection with you. We would appreciate that. We also want to make sure that everyone knows that you are welcome to the Lord's table here this morning. Um, we have moved the baptismal font over to the left a little bit, so it gives us a little bit more space to do communion. Um, if you are wishing to um, use the baptismal font for a sign of the cross, you're more than welcome to do that, but it's not going to be right in front of you now that the Easter season is over. We want to um, just let you know that there were a number of different people that greeted our saviors yesterday at the Synod Assembly. Uh, David Nelson, one of your interim pastors, was celebrating, I believe, his 45th or 50th year of ordained ministry. So I got to see a picture of him and uh, some other folks that said to say hello to you folks. It was a great day out at the Q Center in St. Charles, uh, where we had plenary sessions, workshops, worship, and fellowship. This Wednesday night, we will continue our fellowship study conversations on the porch they begin at 5.30 in the evening. This week, we're going to try something new. We're going ground beef. We're going to do hamburgers. Um, so uh, I'll make sure that we have a little bit of a variation between well done and a little bit pink. Um, so, but um, hope that you can come and be with us. If you've not had the opportunity yet, it's a great opportunity to come and enjoy the fellowship of the evening. Um, we do have a couple of things. Uh, sheets, I guess, of informational sheets um, that are out in the Narthex area uh, that will, we studied last week, we studied Mark, this week we're studying Matthew, so if you'd like to kind of read up on it, if you're planning on coming, or even if you're not able to come, but would like to read the materials that we're using, please grab one um, out in the Narthex today. Um, we would also continue to encourage you to Consider being an assisting minister. If you have that inclination, let me know. As you will see, there's a few of our assisting ministers that are doing a lot of the work, and um, especially during the summertime. So if you are interested in being an assisting minister or even helping with communion, uh, that would be wonderful. So please see me if you are interested in doing that. Um, we are going to be welcoming um, this week a new group that are going to be coming for our leader treks. Uh, they are coming from, they are called the American Heritage Girls from Fairfield, Ohio. They will be arriving this afternoon, and they'll be going home next sun, Saturday morning. So we won't see them in worship, uh, but if you're here during the week, you might see some of them around here. Please greet them in the name of our Lord uh, when you see them. And um, it's a, they've just been a wonderful group of kids um, thus far, and so now begins kind of the, the summer program year where one group comes in every week. They use this as kind of their um, center or their uh, kind of their headquarters, and then they go out and do mission work in the community. So it's really a great opportunity for them. It's really a great opportunity for us. So we thank the leadership of our congregation uh, for having that as a, as a um, focal point uh, for this summer. Uh, this lunch bunch is going to be meeting on June 15th at the Olive Garden at 1 o'clock. I said noon one other time. It's 1 o'clock on June 15th. So if you're interested in that, that's out in the um, Narthex area as well. We do have prayers that we continue to lift in our prayers today. We want to lift in our prayers Bob Cano, um, Mary, Marilyn Lee, Jeanette Lee. Jeanette is going to be having open heart surgery this month. Kay Speckhart. Uh, Kay uh, was in the hospital for several days this week 
uh, but she is with us this morning. You can't stop someone from singing in the choir. So um, we're so glad you're back with us, Kay, and doing well. We also want to remember in our prayers this morning, Dorothy Dom. Dorothy fell uh, this last week while she was out at the Bickford, is it? Is that the name of the facility? Um, she didn't have to go to the hospital, a little bit bruised, uh, but they also are having some issues with COVID out there. So just be aware of that uh, if you are thinking about going out to see her. So those are our prayer concerns this morning. Uh, we prepare ourselves now for Please stand. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who greets us in this and every season, whose word never fails, whose promise is sure. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of our neighbors. Merciful God, we confess that we have sinned, we have hurt our community, we have squandered your blessings, we have hoarded your bounty. In the name of Jesus, forgive us and grant us your mercy. Righteous God, we confess that we have sinned, we have failed to be honest, we have lacked the courage to speak, we have spoken falsely in the name of Jesus. Forgive us and grant us your mercy. God is a cup of cold water when we thirst. God offers boundless grace when we fail. Claim the gift of God's mercy. You are freed and forgiven in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. In the fullness of God's love and the breath of God's embrace, be with you all. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, 
Let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to God's people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty, and Father, we worship you. We give you thanks, we praise you for your glory, Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us, you are seated at the of the Father, receive our prayer, for you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord. Star Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father, Let us pray. Almighty creator and ever living God, we worship your glory, eternal three in one. We praise your power, majestic one in three. Keep us steadfast in this faith. Defend us from all adversity and bring us at last into your presence where you live in endless joy and love through the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit one God, now and forever. Amen. Our first reading today will be read responsively, so please read the bold colored print. O Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. You whose glory is chanted above the heavens out of the mouths of infants and children, you have set up a fortress against your enemies to silence the foe and avenger. When I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars you have set in their courses. What are mere mortals that you should be mindful of them? Human beings that you should care for them? Yet you have made them little less than divine. With glory and honor, you crown them. You have made them rule over the works of your hands. You have put all things under their feet. All flocks and cattle, even the wild beasts of the field. The birds of the air, the fish of the sea, and whatever passes along the paths of the sea. O Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. A reading from Corinthians. Paul writes, Finally, brothers and sisters, farewell. Put things in order. Listen to my appeal. Agree with one another. Live in peace. And the God of love and peace will be with you. Greet one another with a holy kiss. All the saints greet you. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. Thanks be to God. To God. I am a Lord to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternity.
The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. Now the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them. And when they saw Jesus, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and our Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. We have been having a lot of fun on Wednesday evenings on the porch. The food's been great. I think we enjoy each other's company quite a bit. And we're also learning a little bit about Scripture that maybe some of us haven't known before. One of the things that we've been talking about over the past two weeks is the importance of context of Scripture when we are reading Holy Scripture. Anytime we seek to read Holy Scripture, I believe it is important to understand a bit about what the original author and the original readers of that text might have been thinking about when they first heard this read. For instance, in today's Gospel from Matthew, biblical scholars know that Matthew was probably written in about 85 AD, approximately 50 years following the death and resurrection of Jesus. There was a gap because the initial people who saw the resurrection of Jesus and believed in it, believed that he was coming back almost immediately. And it was only after a period of time that the gospel writers started to write things down and record them. We also know that Matthew was writing to Jewish Christians who had been under significant persecution by the Gentiles and the Roman government. We know that in Matthew, Jesus appears to be the new Moses, someone who is teaching and leading the disciples in much the same way that Moses taught and led the Israelites. In Matthew, unlike Mark and Luke, Jesus is a great teacher. So much of the Gospel of Matthew is Jesus' teaching. Jesus also is the fulfillment of Old Testament prophecy. So throughout the Gospel of Matthew, unlike Mark or Luke, we see the author Matthew going to great pains to make sure that his readers understand that truly Jesus is the longed-for Messiah that was predicted by Isaiah and Jeremiah. Another important fact that is very important for our understanding of our gospel lesson for this day is that in this passage, when Jesus commissions the disciples on the night following his resurrection, he implores the disciples to go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit and teaching them to obey everything they had commanded him. This, this verse is the only passage in all of the Gospels where Jesus is said to use a Trinitarian expression in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And the reason that we read this particular gospel lesson on 
Holy Trinity Sunday is that it is the only place in the Gospels where we refer to God as Father, Son, and Spirit. In fact, a reference to the Trinity that was also mentioned when Marisa was reading her second reading for today in 2 Corinthians, that is the only other reference in all of the New Testament where there is a formulation of a Trinitarian doctrine, Father, Son, and Spirit. For you see, the formation of the Trinity, as we know it within the church, does not appear for 200 more years. So why does Matthew include this Trinitarian-like document, doctrine, in Matthew 28? Biblical scholars would say that in early as 85 AD, the Jewish Christian community of Matthews was using this reference as a part of their worship experiences. Matthew takes that reference and shares it as a part of the gospel message at the end of the gospel and puts it within the words of Jesus. The first utterances of the Trinitarians were articulated in actual worshiping and serving Christians who under stress and in the face of questions and challenges were sweating it out with clarity as to why they were willing to live a life that looked foolish to others, caring for widows and orphans, suffering persecution by the Gentiles and the Romans, and spilling their own blood on behalf of Jesus. All of this for the wild notion that the Spirit had gathered these people together in the life of God, the God who in Christ was now making peace with the world. It was only a couple centuries later that theologians served to develop the doctrine of Trinity that we find initially here in Matthew. I think it's really important when we are trying to understand the significance of Holy Trinity Sunday in 21st century America. Because a lot of folks wonder, what is so important about the doctrine of the Trinity? In seminary, I would say, it is Trinity Sunday. But someone would say to me, but people who have cancer probably don't care. But it's Trinity Sunday. But those young couples who cannot get pregnant probably don't care. But it's Trinity Sunday. But families dealing with wayward teenagers don't care either. A couple that's headed for divorce or a person who's lost their job, do they really care if it's Trinity Sunday? Anne Lamont who is a contemporary Christian writer, probably says the skeptical, skeptical skepticism the best when she writes, I don't need to understand the concept of the unity of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. I just need to know that I can turn my life over to wherever came up with the redwood trees. What is important about this Sunday is not the doctrine of the Trinity, but rather that this Trinitarian assertion was made by the earliest Christians less than 50 years following the resurrection of Jesus. This statement, go baptize in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, is asserting from the very beginning of the Christian movement that God is with us. This Trinitarian formula affirms God's presence to a struggling band of Jewish Christians. The Trinitarian formula found at the end of Matthew's Gospel avows that no matter what or in whatever circumstance that we find ourselves in, God will always be there with us. 
That is why this Sunday is important to the cancer patient, to the couple struggling with pregnancy, those dealing with child-raising issues, divorce, or unemployment, or any of the other things that people are struggling with at this time in their lives. The Trinitarian formula that Matthew uses for the first time in Christian thought conveys to all of us that God is with us in all of our joys and in all of our sorrows, as he was at the beginning, immediately after the resurrection of his son, our Savior. The promise to Matthew's community is the same promise that is made to us at our Savior's Lutheran Church in Aurora, Illinois. In baptism, we are immersed into the whole being of God, whether we understand it or not. We are not powerless in the world. We are not disconnected from an omnipotent God or from the redeeming work of God in human flesh, or from the very presence of that same God who is the Holy Spirit, who dwells within us and among us and continues even to work outside of us. That is a tremendous gift that we celebrate this morning for all people who are feeling detached, isolated, alone, angry, deserted, depressed, Grieving, hopeless, fearful, anxious, wounded, ashamed, or tired. God is there for you. The scene of Jesus commissioning his disciples on the night of the resurrection would be comparable for us today if someone this morning got up in front of our saviors here and started to tell everybody, I want you to go into the world I want you to cure cancer. I want you to clean up the environment. I want you to evangelize to the unbelieving. And while you're at it, can you work on world peace? That's how crazy this commission was that Jesus brought to his disciples. Eleven of them who were terrified, some doubting, as it says in our text today. The fact that this commission seems utterly impossible throws the disciples completely on the mercy and the strength of God. The work of the church cannot be done unless we give all the authority for hope and steadfastness to the God who has made this wild investment in each one of us that he has called us in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. This promise means a certain kind of behavior from us as well. What will we do knowing that God loves us in such a way? What will we say if we truly believe that God is with us always? How will we act towards each other? How will we speak about each other if we believe that God is among us? How will we care for God's creation if we believe God is beside us in the garden? How will we tend to this earth that has been entrusted to us if we believe that we can feel God's tears as God watches our apathy for the earth? We are living in a time when decisions and actions and speech often demonstrate a complete indifference to God's presence in our life. So we might ask ourselves today, what should our personal and our collective ministry look like? as members and friends of our Savior Lutheran Church. What should our lives look like? What should this congregation look like as an expression that the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit 
are actually in this room right now? Or do we truly believe in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit that it might give us power and strength to risk, to take a chance on an action, knowing that God promises that he will be there even if we fail? If we were to grant that I am with you always is a summary of the Trinity itself, then maybe Trinity Sunday would not be an irrelevant Sunday in the church calendar. But the belief about a God without which the church could not be the church. The council of our saviors has been praying and talking about what the next steps will be for this congregation. They are important essential conversations to have as we seek out God's presence right here and right now in Aurora, Illinois. But any and all of these discussions we have should be done within the framework Then, even though we might propose something that seems utterly impossible, we need to humble ourselves and trust completely on the mercy and the strength of God to help carry out any and all things that we commit to. Words and poetry have always been an important part of my life. And I'd like to share in conclusion this morning about my experience on January 20th, 2021, the inauguration of our president. I think of the powerful words that day spoken by Amanda Gorman, a young Harvard graduate, that she concluded her poem that morning as a country prepared for a new day. I think Amanda might have been thinking about the power of God's presence in the light of the Trinity and in the light of our nation that morning, Father, Son, and Spirit always believing the presence that this God who can and will change things. She called out in courage and hope to our nation. One thing is certain, she writes, if we merge mercy with might and might with right, then love becomes our legacy and change our children's birthright So let us leave behind a country better than the one we were left with. We will rise, we will raise this wounded world into a wondrous one. We will rise from the gold limbed hills of the west. We will rise from the wind swept northeast where our forefathers first realized revolution. We will rise from the lake rimmed cities of the Midwestern states. We will rise from the sun-baked south. We will rebuild, reconcile, and recover. And every known nook of our nation and every corner called our country, our people diverse and beautiful will emerge battered and beautiful. When day comes, we step out of the shade, aflame and unafraid. The new dawn blooms as we free it. For there is always light, if only brave enough to see it, if only brave enough to be it. This is the message of the Trinity. Have a vision, have a hope, and most importantly, have a trust that God is in the midst of the work that we are doing. The peace of Christ, which passes all human understanding. Keep your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus our Lord.
almighty word, chaos and darkness heard and took their flight. Hear us, we humbly pray, and where the gospel day sheds not its glorious ray, let there be light. Christ who once came to bring on your redeeming wing, healing and sight, health to the troubled mind, sight where illusions blind, oh, now to you, mankind, let there be light. Spirit of truth and love, life-giving holy dove, speed forth your flight. Move on the water's face, bearing the lamp of grace, and in earth's dark is place, let there be light. And blessed three, glorious Trinity. Let us confess the words of the Apostles' Creed, the Trinitarian Creed, the creed that we use this morning at the baptismal font. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Trusting in God's abundant mercy, let us offer our prayers for the world in need. Holy Three, Holy One, you call the church to make disciples of all nations. Encourage bishops, pastors, and deacons in their proclamation of the gospel, and direct all the baptized into lives of humble service. God, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Holy Three, Holy One, you spoke creation into being and called it good. Protect lands and waters threatened by human misuse and sustain living creatures of every kind, wild animals, birds, fish, and every creeping thing. God, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Holy Three, Holy One, you have given humankind authority over the earth. Raise up leaders who listen earnestly, speak honestly, and govern thoughtfully. Heal divisions between nations that we might agree with one another and live in peace. God, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Holy Three, Holy One, you promise to be with us always to, end, to the end of the age. Surround the most in need of your healing presence, any who are lonely all who are grieving, and those who are sick. God, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Comfort all who live in constant fear and anyone who is suffering, who are ill or isolated, especially those who we now name aloud or silently in our hearts. Bob, Marilyn, Jeanette, Kay, and Dorothy. God, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Holy Three, Holy One, you set the earth on its axis, and we experience the seasons, 
Strengthen those enduring challenges this summer, those who suffer in the heat, parents overwhelmed by childhood care responsibilities, and children experiencing food insecurity outside of school. God, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Holy Three, Holy One, you give rest when our work is done. We give thanks for all the saints who now rest in you, confident in the promise of resurrection life in the age to come. God, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Receive our prayers and answer us, O God, in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Please share a sign of God's peace with those around you this morning. Please be seated. Before we begin communion, just a reminder of how we uh, receive communion here. Um, as you come forward, please take a um, glass uh, from one of these trays. Um, there are empty glasses on the perimeter of the tray, and there are pre-filled glasses with um, grape juice in the middle. If you uh, wish not to commune with wine but grape juice, please take one of the pre-filled glasses, um, move up to the, um, the assisting minister, who will present you or offer you a uh, wafer. Uh, please take the wafer, consume that, and then come to me. I will either bless your grape juice or I will pour wine into your glass. And then uh, after you have communed both, uh, taken both elements, please drop your glasses off in the empty trays on either side of the worship area on your way back to your seats. Let us pray. God of field and forest, sea and sky. You are the giver of all good things. Sustain us with these gifts of your creation and multiply your graciousness in us that the world may be fed with your love through Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God.
It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places to give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus the Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so, with the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending. Blessed are you, O God, creator of heaven and earth. You rescued your covenant people, led them on their journeys, and taught them by the prophets. You so loved the world that you gave your only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but have eternal life. On the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After the same manner also he took a cup. When he himself had supped and when he had given thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and drink. This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of as often as we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit in this meal and make us one in this community of faith with your people throughout the world. Glory and praise to you, O God, offer of life, Word made flesh, and power of the host most high, now and forever. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. Let us, gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. All people are called to Christ's table. Come and eat what is good.
May the body of our Lord Jesus Christ in his most precious blood, may it strengthen you and uphold you into life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. We thank you, generous God, for the refreshment we have received at your banquet table. Send us now to spread your generosity into all the world through the one who is our dearest treasure, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. Love the commandments. Keep them. Honor them. Do right by your neighbors. And listen to the Spirit. Now may the God who calls us across the cosmos and speaks in the smallest seed bless, keep, and sustain you now and to the end of the age. Amen. Thank you. Follow and 
Go in peace. Share the harvest. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God. Please stay for some fellowship immediately after the uh, postlet.